Good morning, everyone. This is Dustin Miller, Director of Experience and Innovation. We're here for another Plant Lab Live, and we're in the Texas Native Plant Lab. So welcome to those of you just joining. We're gonna give people a few minutes to get in here. I'll give another introduction, we'll get going. So while we're waiting, we'll just take a quick look at some of the plants that we're gonna talk about today. Thanks, Eat Style Dallas, we are as well. So again, to those of you just joining, this is Native Plant Lab Live. We're actually in the Texas Native Plant Lab, which is pretty close to Garland Road, so I apologize for the road, road noise, but I'll make sure to keep this mic close to me today. Giving people just a few more minutes to hop in here, and then we're gonna get started. So just a little preview of some of the plants that we're gonna get up and up close and personal with today. If you see something here that you know, feel free to hop on and we'll definitely visit all of these amazing plants that I'm previewing here. So once again, my name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience Innovation. We're here for another Plant Lab Live and we're actually in the Texas Native Plant Lab, which is our teaching space here in the main garden uh, that is for our education program. And if you don't recognize where we're at, I'm going to take you over here and show you so visually you can see. We're actually at the old entrance to the DeGoyer Estate. So those are the original entry columns here where the DeGoyer family would have entered. And it takes you right over here to the main garden. So that large tree that you see there is the pecan grove, just to give you a little idea of where we're at today. But we're actually in this cute little garden this is fully maintained by the education staff and by the North Texas Cactus and Succulent Society. So we'll get started right here with this yucca that's called a tree yucca, um, yucca australis. And we actually have a much larger specimen just behind it, which is also blooming. So you'll see these in people's landscapes and you can actually trim up the base. You can see here, we've trimmed it up a bit um, for a really striking landscape plant. But a really interesting fact here is any of these yucca blooms that you see in your yard are actually edible. They have a nice crisp pepper taste to them. If you take that, rinse them really well. A little balsamic, salt and pepper, maybe a little citrus. You've got a really tasty and crunchy salad addition. Uh, so a pretty cool plant. And you can see this smaller one here. We have two bloom stalks right now but each one of these little individual ones eventually will become its own branch, just like this tall one behind us here. So this is tree yucca. This one's pretty easy to find here in Dallas, and it makes a pretty stunning low water landscape plant. Right next door to it is Sotol, which has some really fascinating leaves here. These are pretty sharp, so this one you want to give lots of room. This is a mature specimen. I'll step back here. It's about six feet wide, four feet tall. And it's another one that will give you a bloom stalk. This is last year's that we've left for our, our students when they come in so they can see how this plant reproduces. Another really cool landscape plant. But one of my personal favorites here is our prickly pear collection. This genus is Opuntia. Uh, the plant you're looking at here is as tall as it seems. It's about eight feet tall. This one, the specific variety is called tiger tongue. So I want to get up close here. And you can see there actually aren't any, any spines that are sticking out. But every one of these little, these little dots here, which is where new growth can come from, um, has really fine hairs that can, can irritate your skin. So while this one looks like it's a friendly plant to have around, it actually has the name tiger tongue for a reason. You'll get those glockids in your skin. Uh, another interesting fact is people often ask me, well, do, do cacti have leaves? And when these new pads first start growing, this is the only true leaf on the cactus plant. So eventually these fall off and become that spot here that has the glockids. But those first few weeks of the new pad on the plant is actually the true leaf. And the other great thing that's happening right now on this one is we have a ton of fruit with these flower buds on the top. And eventually these will all become flowers. 
So give this another week or two and we'll have hundreds of blooms on this plant. Now, not all prickly pears are that size. So if we come around here right behind us, we have some little sport varieties that you can find at garden centers. And this is as big as they ever get. So if you're looking for that low water plant, but you want it in your landscape to not block other things, there's lots of little sport varieties. Oh, and I see a friend. So we're gonna zoom in here and take a look at this green and all. Let's see if he sticks around for us. And there he goes. So again, these are some interesting little prickly pears that really give you some unique color. And the blooms on these range from orange and yellow and purple and red. Um, you get all kinds of different colors. In the field behind this, we have autumn sage or salvia. Great hummingbird plant, quickly spreads. Definitely drought tolerant once it's established. And this one comes in all different colors as well. And you can see it not just hummingbirds, but we've got some bumblebees this morning, just loving the nectar. And I'll give you a shot back here at the area that we just visited. So there's that tree yucca and our tiger tongue prickly pear. As we come up to the front here, I want to show you a cool little cactus. This one's native to the mountains and basins, also up in the panhandle. It's called the Turk's Head, and this one is just getting ready to bloom. So if I bring you up in here, when you look inside those spines, they almost look like a little berry. That's going to be a bloom here in a week or two. So we have our succulents and cactus in this garden. We also have some really nice acclimated wildflowers that do really well. So we've got a woodland sage here, again, to bring in those pollinators. And we've got a couple other autumn sages on this side, just to show you they can come in all different colors. And I apologize if I'm not getting to your questions. Our feed is freezing up on me again today. But feel free to send those in and I'll be able to answer them later. So this one is a nice little shrub, actually native to South America, but it's, it's doing pretty well here in North Texas. This one may freeze back on a really bad winter, but this is called Desert Bird of Paradise or Texas Bird of Paradise. And it just gives you these gorgeous flower stalks and they'll last for a couple weeks. And then we'll take a look at what happens to them as we move around here to the back of the garden. So we'll come back to this desert bird of paradise. Also in full bloom right now, all of our red yucca. So especially when you're driving places like 75 or President George Bush Turnpike, you're gonna see a lot of these. If you don't know what they're called, they're called a false red yucca or Hesperallo. Um, these are succulent, they're native to here in Texas. Um, again, hummingbirds, bees, love these plants and they give you some really impressive flower stalks. So this is the pretty standard one you're gonna see, but we've got night blooming, which will be about 10 feet tall. And you can see that this one is getting lots of pollinator action this morning. So we'll just pause here for a little bit and let you enjoy that. Now these bloom stalks are gonna last you all the way through summer and into fall and give you color much of the growing season. And then they get some really interesting seed pods at the end. All right, we're gonna make our way over to a blooming tree right now, and then we'll take a look at that other desert bird of paradise. And then at the end of this, I've got a big show for you, but I'm trying to keep it hidden until we get there. All right, so we've come around the back side of that large tiger tongue. And this tree that you see here is kind of in the peak of glory right now. This is a golden ball lead tree, golden ball lead tree. Again, this one is Texas native. It's from the mountain and basin region of West Texas. And it gets these really beautiful little puffy pom-poms in yellow. 
So because it's from that region, it's a pretty scrubby tree. It gives you lots of light through it. Looks great in a low water environment. And this is about as big as it's gonna get. So this one is about 10 feet. Again, in really cold winters here in the Dallas area, you're gonna get some dieback, uh, but you can trim it back and it just gives you a really fascinating looking tree here. We move into a pot right behind it to a cactus that we see here in the wild. It's actually native to most of Texas. This is the Christmas Choya. It's one of the smallest Choya cactus. And the way that you know that you found a Christmas Choya is in the late summer and into winter, it has fruit about the size of a very small grape and it's bright red. So it almost looks like a tiny little prickly pear fruit. Uh, but again, this one likes to grow mixed in with other plants. We've got it in a pot here just to keep it separate. Um, but it's an interesting little choya. And again, you can break off little pieces of that and you'll have choyas everywhere. So I apologize for this road noise, but I wanted to show you the bean pods on that desert road of paradise. So once the blooms fade off, you're gonna get bean pods that look just like this. And I'll give you a shot here to show you kind of the size of this shrub. This is pretty much at its peak of size. So it makes a great little corner plant or if you have a nice open area with a desert landscape, a really fascinating plant with some bright color. Just behind that is where we have our wildflower garden, mostly blue mist flower, which just hasn't come into bloom yet. So once we get into later summer, our pollinators stick around and they head back here to the blue mist flower. All right, we're moving in over here to another cactus that's native to most regions of Texas. And this one just bloomed for us. This is the horse crippler cactus. Now the reason the plant has this name is through the dry season especially. It sinks down into the ground. It loses a lot of this size and it gets hidden in the, in the scrub. So as people come through with their livestock on their horses, these cactus can give them a little startle. They don't expect these spines and hence the name horse crippler cactus. It has beautiful pink blooms that will turn into bright red fruit. So you can see we had four blooms on this one that within a matter of weeks will turn into a fruit that almost tastes like a dragon fruit. Now we showed you the tree yuccas back behind. We have another little plant here that actually has fallen over, but is quite happy where it's at. So we've left it to live just like that. As we pan across a few more agave, these are mountain agave. And honestly, these ones are just a little too close together. When you plant agaves in your landscape, they may start small like this whale's tongue. They'll quickly grow in and become impossible to separate which is what happened here. And we've got another little Anoli friend, so I'm gonna zoom in here, see if he has anything to say about that. So I'm sorry, I'm not seeing any of your comments, but I know we have some people asking about what other things live in this garden. We regularly have rabbits. Uh, we have some broad-headed skinks. Those are the largest skink that you find here in North Texas. If you take a look on Google on that, they have just beautiful rose-colored necks. Uh, we have five-line skinks, and then of course, all those little anoles. All right, so I've saved my favorite thing for last. We actually have three agave blooms happening right now. The agave plant is monocarpic, which means it only blooms once and then it dies. So we've got some smaller plants here that are all pups from an original mother. But when I step back, you're going to see we've got some bloom spikes in action. This one's our youngest. It's been growing for about a week and a half. As I pan over, this is another century plant, agave americana. And this one's already up to probably about 15 to 18 feet. But right now, we've got an agave montana in full bloom. So this bloom spike started only about three weeks ago. It can grow up to a foot a day. 
and then eventually it opens up and that asparagus looking bloom turns into this glorious inflorescence with tons of pollinator activity. I'm gonna zoom in here and see if anybody can see all those bees just flying around. Now these blooms are gonna last for a couple weeks, but the bloom spike itself can last for months. It'll dry out. Interesting fact, these bloom spikes in the Caribbean are actually used as Christmas trees. So once they dry out, people will cut them off, save them, and it becomes that winter Christmas tree. But right now it's home to hundreds and hundreds of bees flying in for nectar. I'll step back here to give you the full view. There isn't anything much more impressive in a water-wise or desert garden than an agave in bloom. So as these flowers fade, it will set fruit up on all those arms. And on, on occasion, it'll also make little plantlets, sort of like a spider plant in your house. And those plantlets, you can put right in the ground and grow new babies, but also the plant will, will put off pups at the base. So well, I'll show you what those look like here on another agave. This agave is not currently blooming, but you can take a look and see what happens. So we've moved over. This is the thorn crested agave, agave lofantha. And originally this started most likely as one mother plant. And now we have all these pups just growing everywhere. Again, this is a spiky job if you want to separate them, but you can definitely pull out the pups and move them to another place. We've removed pups from this at least once a year for the last four years. And there goes another agave friend. So again, this started out as one single plant and has just grown into a massive mound that we continue to scale back. So we're just gonna take one last little glimpse here across the native plant lab and give you a view of our education space here in the main garden. Once again, this is the Texas native plant lab if you're here on a visit during regular opening hours, you can normally get back here. But right now, it's a pretty amazing space for pollinators. So once again, my name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience and Innovation here at the Dallas Arboretum. Thank you for your time at today's Plant Lab Live. We're here in the Texas Native Plant Lab looking at our cactus and succulent selection. We'll be back next week with another Plant Lab Live and we'll see you real soon.